Man, I got to tell y'all, I don't know if y'all feel the same way I feel. Sheriff Grady Judd is, is clearly becoming one of my favorite people. This brother right here. I, I like I could damn near call him a brother because I feel like we feel the same. We think the same. I know he's on the law enforcement side, but he tends to be really, really harsh with people who hurt, murder and abuse children. But so before we get into the details about these two, I believe they are humans. Before we get to talking about them, let me give you guys a disclaimer, especially if this is your first time here. Some viewers may find the following content offensive and controversial. The information in this video comes from multiple sources, including court records, official police charges, news web articles, and interviews. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. Of course, I'm getting this story from lawandcrime.com. If they have an article, I think I'm going to read from them first because they do just a great, great job. So, of course, if you see Sheriff Grady Judd, this is coming out of Florida, Polk County again. A mother and a father in Florida were arrested this week for allegedly killing their 18-month-old daughter, leaving the child in her car seat overnight after returning home from a drug and alcohol fueled 4th of July party. So these sons of bitches got money to party, got money to kick it, want to have a good damn time, were so enthralled in enjoying themselves, being selfish, that they didn't even bother to get a babysitter or just be responsible parents and understand that when you have children, that now you've chosen to make that your responsibility. And you neglected it. Let me tell y'all the story. Joel Rondon, R-O-N-D-O-N, and Jasmine Rondon, both who are 33 years old, were taken into custody on Thursday and charged with one count each of aggravated manslaughter of a child, authorities announced. This is not an accident. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd, my best friend, said during a, a Thursday press conference, this is pure negligence, and I suggest to you the core of the negligence is the abuse of drugs. Who suffered? Who died? The 18-month-old baby. So don't ever tell me that these drugs are low-level and nonviolent because they are because they're at the core of why this child is dead today. According to a press release from the Polk County Sheriff's Office, the Rondons on Tuesday attended a 4th of July celebration in Lakeland with their three children, ages 8 years old, 6 years old, and 18 months old. The family arrived at the home at around 3 a.m. on July the 5th after both parents had consumed alcohol and smoked marijuana during the course of the party, the uh, release states. Upon their return, Jasmine Rondon instructed her husband to bring the toddler inside while she took the other two children in their home. Joel, the, the dad, said that the car door that they used to access the child's car seat was open at the time. He then brought a few things inside and went back out where he observed that all four doors of the car had been closed. Assuming his wife had retrieved their daughter, Joel Rondon got into bed with his wife and went to sleep. Thank you. You took the words right out of my mouth. Hashtag goofy. Goofy. This is flat out goofy. Neither husband nor wife asked each other if they had brought the victim inside, according to the release. Joel Rondon awoke around 10 a.m. the following morning and spent approximately an hour preparing for work. At around 11 a.m., he asked one of the older children to check on the baby in the bedroom. However, the child informed Joel that the baby was not in the bedroom, prompting him to search the house. Eventually, Joel ventured outside and looked inside the car, which was parked in the driveway, fully exposed to the sun. Inside the vehicle, he discovered the unresponsive toddler still strapped in the car seat, and in a panic, he brought the child inside and then he and his wife drove the toddler to Lakeland Regional Health Medical Center. 
Despite efforts to revive the girl and, the low, and lower her body temperature, the child could not be saved and was pronounced deceased at 2.42 p.m., the release states. At the time of her death, authorities said that the child's internal, internal body temperature was recorded at 104.4 degrees Fahrenheit. Medical Center staff promptly notified law enforcement who assumed control of the investigation. Let me say this before we even move to my next point. Every time, somebody always does it, but every single time there's somebody that comes out and says, Jay, you know it was an accident. Do you really think that these people did this on purpose? Well, you know what? I'm thankful to have Sheriff Grady Judd because now you don't have to just take my word for it. He actually said that this was not an accident. So I'm just going to repeat his words. No, I don't think it was an accident. Even though it was painfully evident that the child suffered an absolutely torturous death, Lakeland Regional still worked on the baby to try to save its life. But it, in fact, was deceased. Sheriff Judd added that the heat index on the day of the victim's death was 105 degrees. Later that evening at approximately 7 p.m., both parents willingly submitted to drug screenings conducted by the Department of Children and Family Services. Joel tested positive for meth, for methamphetamine, marijuana, and alcohol, while Jasmine, the mother, tested positive for both marijuana and alcohol. So we got a meth head in the family. 17 hours after arriving home from the party, Jasmine tested positive for alcohol and marijuana. Joel tested positive for alcohol, marijuana, and methamphetamines, Judd said. 17 hours later, so you can imagine what kind of shape they were in when they arrived from this party and left this child harnessed in the baby seat. And a subsequent autopsy revealed that the child, or excuse me, that the cause of the victim's death was hypothermia resulting from being left inside the car and the manner of death was ruled a homicide. On July the 6th, Joel and Jasmine were taken into custody. Subsequently, uh, subsequently, I can't talk today. Booked into the Polk County Jail. They are scheduled to appear in court again on August the 8th, which is two days before my birthday. So that's going to be pretty easy for me to remember that. But if you guys think there's an accident, please let me know. If y'all like to make, ex uh, make excuses for crackheads and meth heads, please let me know. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And we're doing really good with our videos. Please continue to share them and hit that thumbs up because the more people hit that thumbs up, it shares these videos and let more people know where to find them. So please, please hit that thumbs up. I'm going to let you guys watch a couple of these news videos. I'm going to cut some of the longer ones because they're like really, really long. Sheriff Grady Judd says Joel and Jasmine Rondon left a 4th of July party with their three kids ages 8, 6, and 18-month-old to return to their Winchester Estates home in North Lakeland at 2 a.m. The couple began unloading the car. Jasmine told Joel to bring the baby inside while she put the two older kids to bed. Joel saw all four doors of their car closed, assuming the baby was out. But it wasn't until 11 a.m. when Joel discovered the baby inside the car, sitting in the direct side. She's certainly old enough to realize that she is suffering a torturous death at the negligence of Joel and Jasmine. Sheriff Judd says the heat index was 105 degrees. The baby died in the car. She was rushed to Lakeland Regional Health Medical Center. After the life-saving measures, after the body being cooled down, the baby still had a core temperature of 104.4 degrees. Neighbors saw the investigation unfold and are now devastated. I have a 22-month-old and a 7-month-old, so, and I know how hot Florida is just early in the morning, so I just, my heart goes out to the family. The Sheriff Judd says 17 hours after arriving home from the party, Jasmine tested positive for alcohol and marijuana. Same for Joel, but he also tested positive for meth. 
Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. And an 18 month old baby to the party. And the party went on through the evening of July the 4th. And about 2 o'clock in the morning on July the 5th, in the middle of the night, they left this party in downtown Lakeland at some people's homes to return to their house in North Lakeland. When they arrived at the house, Jasmine took the six-year-old and the eight-year-old into the house, said, I'm going to give them something to eat and put them to bed. And Jasmine told Joel, bring the baby into the house. Joel then was taking some food stuff, some trays of food into the house. Jasmine went in to feed a six and an eight-year-old child, and she put them to bed, and subsequently she went to bed. Joel, when he was taking the food trays into the house, noticed the right rear door open. When he finished taking the food trays into the house, he noticed the door was closed. So now he thought that Jasmine must have gotten the child. So he went in. Jasmine was in bed asleep. He went to bed asleep about 3 o'clock in the morning. Now listen to my timeline here. It's 3 o'clock in the morning. Joel wakes up at 10 o'clock and is preparing to get ready to go to work. About an hour later at 11 o'clock, he looks at the 8-year-old and says, Where is the baby, this 18-month-old little girl? Jasmine's still in bed asleep. The eight-year-old looks around and says, I don't know where she is, where she normally slept in the bed or in the room with the eight-year-old. So Joel starts to look throughout the house, and he doesn't see the baby. He goes to the car, and there is the baby still strapped in the child carrier in the car with a heat index 105 degrees on that day. He grabbed the child carrier and the infant from the car, runs inside screaming for Jasmine. Jasmine, who it's reported has some medical training, looks at the baby and says, I know the baby is deceased, is dead. Despite that, they grab the baby out of the car seat they rush to Lakeland Regional Medical Center. And upon arrival there, even though it's painfully evident that this child has suffered a torturous death, a absolute torturous death, Lakeland Regional still worked on the baby to try to save its life. But it, in fact, was deceased. Father and mother in Lakeland are charged with aggravated manslaughter after the Polk County Sheriff says they left their 18-month-old daughter in a hot car, left her overnight. It is a tragic story, and it happened over 4th of July celebrations. News for Jack's reporter Ashley Harding joins us live in the studio today. Ashley, such a tragic reminder of what can happen if parents and caregivers are not alert and careful. Melanie, it's true, and oftentimes when this happens, it's the result of a change in routine. But this case, we will tell you, is different. Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd said both parents drank alcohol and smoked marijuana when they were at that party. Polk County tragedy. Joel and Jasmine Rondon now charged with aggravated manslaughter and the death of their 18-month-old daughter. Deputies say the couple left her alone in a hot car for hours. This rips your heart out. There's no other way to explain it. Mug shots in hand, Polk County Sheriff Grady Judd said after the family arrived home. Jasmine Rondon instructed her husband to get the baby while she brought two older children inside. Judd said after bringing some things into the house, Joel Rondon assumed his wife brought the toddler in after seeing the car doors closed. They went to bed and found her unresponsive the next morning. Judd said both parents were tested 17 hours after arriving home from the party, with Jasmine testing positive for marijuana and alcohol. Joel also tested positive for marijuana and alcohol, but also methamphetamine. This child's 18 months old. 
She's not old enough to let herself out of the harness, but she's certainly old enough to realize that she is suffering a torturous death. Tragedies like this have increased over the years. According to NoHeatStroke.org, 950 children have died in hot cars in the U.S. since 1998. So far in 2023, there have been 10. It's important to know that heat stroke begins when the core body temperature reaches about 104 degrees, and a child can die when their body temperature reaches 107. It's important for parents and caregivers to understand proper safeguards to make sure this doesn't happen to them. Number one, never leave a child in a car unattended for any period of time. Make it a habit to check your entire car before leaving, especially the back seat. And ask your child care provider to call if your child does not show up for care as expected. And place a personal item like a purse or briefcase in the back seat. And make sure to keep car keys out of a child's reach and teach them that the car is not for play. And some advice for everyone, including people without children, is to lock your car year-round no matter what. Doing this can prevent children from getting into a car unnoticed. And if you ever see a child in a locked car, call 911 immediately. Bruce and Mel, back to you. Now, the extreme heat also leading to a tragedy in Lakeland. Boy, it did, and that's where an 18-month-old girl died after being left in a hot car. NBC6 anchor Trina Robinson is live in studio with the sad details this evening. Trina. Extremely sad, guys. The sheriff's office says it all started when the child's parents returned home from a 4th of July party around 2 a.m. Now, that mother reportedly told the father to bring the child inside while she put the two other children, ages 6 and 8, to bed. When the father went back to the car, he noticed all the doors were closed and assumed that the child was already inside their home. Both parents then went to sleep. When they woke up the next morning and went looking for the child, they noticed her still strapped in the car, unresponsive. She was taken to the hospital where she still had an internal body temperature of over 104 degrees. Doctors were unfortunately unable to revive or save her. It is brutally hot for everyone under the best of circumstances. And then this child is shut in the car, obviously with no movement of air, with it becoming hotter and hotter and hotter as the morning went on. And you just can I mean, there aren't words to explain this. And, and Jasmine's... Well, here are a few ways you can prevent a tragedy like this one. Another just tragically sad toddler death we need to tell you about tonight. This one in Polk County. Two parents are now in jail after their 18 month old was left inside of a hot car overnight and died. So basically to reiterate, like somebody said in the chat, they were too high to double check. Yes, that's exactly what happened. And I just think there needs to be dire consequences, which is why they're being charged like this. No, they, I don't think they did this intentionally. But you were neglectful, which is a crime. You were neglectful to your children, flat out. And that has to be punished. ABC Action News reporter Rebecca Petit is live for us in Polk County and joins us now with all the details she's learned. Rebecca. Sheriff Grady Judd is calling this one of the most horrible and tragic deaths his department has seen in a long time. The 18 month old forgotten inside of a hot car after her parents had a long night of partying. Investigators say Jasmine and Joel Rondon went to a party on the 4th of July and the parents took their three children with them. They returned home to North Lakeland around 3 a.m. Jasmine reportedly took the six and eight year old children inside and told her husband to bring the baby. Joel was taking food inside the house and assumed Jasmine took the baby inside. As Joel is getting ready for work the following morning, he does not see the 18 month old in bed. Around 11 a.m., he found the baby still inside the car, strapped in the car seat. The parents rushed a child to the hospital where they confirmed that the baby was already dead. And let me say this because it's a great point and thank you so much for the super chat. Maureen said the baby's temperature was 104. A few hours after they cooled her down is what I heard. It was way higher when she was in the car and passed away. And that's absolutely true. Now, what the actual temperature was at that time, they can't actually determine. I'm sure they could probably take a guess. But I could almost guarantee it was a hell of a lot hotter in that car. 
with no air movement, door shut, insulation. It's like a freaking oven in there and just cooked. That baby just cooked. But thank you for your support. I appreciate that. After the body being cooled down, the baby still had a core temperature of 104.4 degrees. And this was like three hours after the baby was taken out of the hot car. Sheriff Judd says 17 hours after the party, the parents both tested positive for alcohol and marijuana. Joel also reportedly had meth in his system. Their two children are now with relatives as DCF investigates. Both parents are being charged with aggravated manslaughter of a child. Live in Poe County, Rebecca Petit, ABC. And I've heard this happening a lot. And I can't even act like I wasn't a parent that was taking my daughter to and from a car in and out of the house. The first thing that you do, even if you have multiple kids at the time, I only had just my daughter. I was taking her primarily most of the time. Like you would just think that common sense would tell you if you have groceries or whatever else, you take your child in the house first. Why would you think to take trays of food first? Why would you think to get the older kids in the house first? Because at that age, at nine years old and whatever the other age that a child was, they can pretty much take themselves inside. You, both of y'all together, put your two little crackhead minds together and both of y'all take that child in the house and we're none the wiser. And this child survives. It's just a very, very stupid story but this has to be a cautionary tale and an example to everybody else to not do stupid crap like this let me know what your guys thoughts are to that little girl we don't even have a name or a picture if i get it i'll post it as a thumbnail but r.i.p to that beautiful soul that baby deserved better parents all the way around but let me know what you guys think about this story okay thank you